So you want to make a horror game, but you don't know where to start. Now, as you see here, this is one of the horror games that I've been working on recently. I've got a whole story, but to sum it all up, the player is inside of an asylum, basically, and they have to find a way to escape. But really, there is no escape. But behind the scenes, I have the whole story laid out in a way that makes complete sense to me and that I can develop with very easily. And I want to show you guys how to do that because it's almost essential for making any Roblox game, especially horror game. So first off, grab a pen of paper or maybe notepad if you want to, and you want to decide on the overall theme of your horror game. Is it going to be supernatural? Is it going to be psychological? Is it going to be survival horror or is it going to be a mix of elements? A good example for each of these, for the survival horror game, that'd be a game sort of like Rainbow Friends where you have tasks that you have to do and you're usually being chased by some sort of enemy. For Supernatural, this is going to be things sort of like zombies, ghosts, stuff along that sort of line. Now, Psychological Horror, this is sort of like my Asylum game right here. It plays with the mind, sort of. And the whole creepiness factor is from certain phobias, instead of from a creature. Now that you have that done, you want to decide the tone that you want to convey. Or establish it, I should say. Whether that's going to be eerie, chilling, suspenseful, or even outright terrifying. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the difference between movie genres, the thriller, and horror. You see, thriller is usually not as horrifying as horror. It's kind of more laid back, but still suspenseful. Whereas horror is downright terrifying most of the time. So it's the same thing with games. You can have sort of a thriller type of game that's more eerie or on the easy side. And then you can have one that's outright terrifying. A good example of these ones would be... Uh, for outright terrifying, Elmira, The Mimic, games like that that are just really scary on Roblox. But then you have games that are still in the horror genre that are more, I guess, just suspenseful in general, but aren't as terrifying. I don't really have a good example for that on me at the moment, but I'm sure you can understand what I'm saying. Now, one thing that makes all horror games stand out is its unique setting. If you want to develop your own kind of game in general, you want to consider the time period, the location, the atmosphere... And all of these things are going to enhance your horror experience. Let's say you're making a 1950s game. It was based in the 1950s, I mean. It's probably some sort of abandoned city or abandoned house even. Or just even abandoned building. That would be the time period and the location. Then the atmosphere, do you want it to be abandoned? Do you want it to be lively? Do you want it to be dark, scary? Like, how do you want your atmosphere to go? And by the way, just write down all of these things on your pen and paper while we're going down here. So now you should know the general theme of your game. You should know what type of horror it's going to be, whether that be supernatural, psychological, etc. You know where it's going to take place, what it's going to be and look like. I want you to really go as much into detail as you can. Of course, the more detail you go into, the much better off it's going to be. But it's perfectly fine if you can only get a little bit at first. Next, I want you to make a simple map layout for your game. This is the one that I made for this game. It's a little outdated. I changed a few things. I've yet to make a new one, actually. But you can see I've got the main theme of my map laid out. It's got all the different rooms on it. It's got all the different things I want the player to be able to do and explore on here. And that was kind of my base foundation for building this entire map. I want you to build like a starting room. Well, don't go building, I mean, but draw a starting room. And then you want to kind of build off of that in each direction you want to. Maybe you're in a forest even, so you can build or draw out a forest. Or you can draw out a circus or wherever your horror game is going to be. And once again, try to get as much into detail as you can. But don't go like over the top because that's just going to waste your time really. Now that you've got the theme, the genre, and the map layout, you want to establish some sort of mystery or unknown element. What this is going to do is going to keep the players intrigued and also curious. This could be like the source of the horror, whether that be the monster or the monster's backstory even. Like a dark sort of secret. A series of unexplained events like oh why did that broom fall over or i don't know maybe why did the circus carnival automatically turn on when we entered the park you know it could just be all sorts of different things that happen that the player has no clue why they happened or how they happened and you can even build on this by planning to reveal information gradually just to maintain suspense and tension because if you just have everything happen and the player doesn't ever find out why or how it's going to be kind of boring for them because there's no suspense. It just kind of happened and then nothing went on with it. So if you want to put like notes around your game or 
something like that. We're actually going to be covering that in the rest of the horror series. But whatever way you can reveal information, even if it's just like, I don't know, uh, letters on a whiteboard. And now, while you're establishing that mystery element and you're revealing information gradually, I want to tell you to build on the fear of the unknown as well because you don't want to reveal all the information. That's going to get rid of all the intrigue and all the curiosity of the player. So you want to kind of exploit the fear of the unknown by revealing that information selectively. You kind of want to leave room for the player's imaginations to kind of run wild and figure some things out on their own. So there's definitely a balance between revealing all the information and keeping some of it kind of closed off. And now something I want to share with you guys is that a lot of horror games are actually made off of like myths, legends, even just a history of past events that happened in real life that they kind of built off of and fantasized about. So if you can find some sort of story or myth or legend or whatever it is that kind of goes along with your horror game that's going to be beneficial to your game because it's going to not only give you more of an idea of what your game's going to be like but also kind of gives you a reference and here's where i want to get into environmental storytelling so with environmental storytelling it's all about using the environment around the player to tell a story pretty self-explanatory but you use visuals, sound effects, and even just interactive elements to convey certain narrative details. Like you can have, I don't know, footsteps somewhere off in the forest, and that way the player knows that someone's out there, but they don't know who's out there. And that also leads onto the whole curiosity thing that we were talking about earlier, or maybe a bucket flings off of a tree somewhere. You know something's up there in the tree, but you don't know what it is again. And so you can kind of add on to your story or tell a story through all these different events. And it can also be a past event that took place, like whether there's a campfire on the ground that just went out recently, like you can have some smoke kind of rising out from the fire. That will just kind of give the player some sort of sense of unease because they don't know who was just there or if they're still around there. So there's all sorts of ways to just kind of add environmental storytelling like this into your game to kind of propel your story forwards and even just use some of this on your map layout like have a campfire here or have i don't know maybe a blood puddle somewhere over here you know you can have all sorts of different things that kind of add to your story just with the environment as well not even having to do any narration text anything like that pretty cool now another thing i want to talk about that's a problem with a lot of horror games usually in the story genre recently is that you need to maintain pacing and your rhythm it kind of kills the mood in your horror game or even well for this it's the story games but they're still in the horror genre technically nothing kills the mood as much as when something really scary is about to happen but there's like 30 to 45 seconds of straight dialogue of like this character talking to this boss or this boss talking to this character or this character talking to the other character you know like i want the action i want the story I'm here for the gameplay, you know, I don't want to hear just 30, 45 seconds of non-stop yapping, if you know what I mean. But the thing is that you do want to have a sort of balance where it's not just yapping and it's not just intense action inside of your game. You want to balance moments of like intense horror with periods of quiet tension or even exploration or advancement leading up to those intense horror moments. But don't ever just have like a dull moment where the player is just standing still doing nothing unless it directly adds to the story and you think it's completely necessary. And now last but not least for playing out your story, I want you to consider multiple endings. We're going to be going over multiple endings over the course of this horror series. So I want you to kind of plan out a few different endings for your game. Take break-in for example at the end of their game they had go into different sorts of directions they had the sewer ending sorry if i'm spoiling and they have the i think they had some sort of egg event a while ago sorry i kind of forgot a lot of stuff about that game but they have multiple endings and that's the point and that will add a ton of replayability to your game because players will want to go through all the different options but it also makes your game a little more unique because not every horror game has multiple endings and it's perfectly fine if your horror game doesn't have multiple endings but there's no harm in doing so unless it just complicates the story too much and how you're going to add multiple endings you want to provide players with certain choices that will influence the outcome of your story so maybe you have a fork in your path where you can go left or you can go right 
or maybe you have a ability to help someone on the side of the road where if you help them then they join you and if you don't help them then they become your enemy or whatever there are so many different ways to add sorts of choices like this they'll influence once again the outcome of your story so just make sure that your game is ultimately unique your story is unique that you have everything that you want to be planned out i'd also want you to i guess another thing i should add is that you should write out your monster your idea for the monster what you want him to look like what you want him to do how you want him to act does he have a backstory is it even something that can have a backstory or is it some sort of glob of goo somewhere you know make your monster unique make him interesting, make him look cool. That's about all I have for writing your own story at the moment. Feel free to leave any comments down below if you have anything that you think I should add or if you think I've missed anything, but feel free to just write out your story, make it unique, make it fun, make it interesting, make it scary most of all, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.